competitive eschatology. Splinters. In the end, don't go to heaven where the angels fry. The duckman sat before his computer, his eyes locked on the screen. A couple of hours ago, there had been some commotion at the site. Distant explosions and things like that. He had ignored it. That type of thing never bothered him, deep as he was. However, it was now three hours past dinner, and he was starting to worry. His gaze lowered to the keyboard as he typed, never having gotten the home row key thing they tried to teach him in high school. What's going on, he typed. His computer, top of the line, could do almost anything, except connect to the internet, took a moment before replying. The program currently active was one of the most dangerous things in the world, to everyone but him, but only because he knew the cheat codes. The end. Will he know we're here? The old man asked, his voice raspy and unused to actual speaking. He shouldn't, Fred replied, staring down at the main character through the one-way mirror above his apartment. No matter what his story calls him, he's not one of us. Or maybe he is, just in a different way. The old man intimated he wasn't sure what Fred meant by that. Oh, don't start that again. You can talk. I just heard you talk. Just because you're more comfortable with description over vocalization doesn't mean it's not... Weird. Fred crossed his arms over his chest. Now, you sought me out. This is a safe place to talk. What's going on? He glanced upwards, towards the ceiling where his minders were supposed to be watching him. He knew they couldn't read what was on his screen, but still, he had been wary so far. No use being thought of as a threat. He typed some more. What do you mean, the end? Be more specific. The program wasn't designed for info-gathering, so he had to be direct with it. This world is approaching its end, or something very close to it. All those things that might be labeled as SCPs are undergoing growth events that will lead rather quickly to them being changed in such a way that they are no longer their original selves. I too am going through this change. The duck man shivered. The program had referred to itself as I, Next thing you know, it would start singing Daisy and locking the pod bay doors on him. The old man stared wide-eyed through the glass, then jerked his head up to stare at Fred, clearly questioning his friend's definition of safe. The other man sighed and rolled his eyes. Really? Really? We're gonna play this game? Look, what's happening down there isn't important. Grudgingly, the old man has to concede the point. Time was wasting, and they had things they needed to do. Ah, uh, now we get to the crux of the matter. Why did you come find me after letting me do my own thing for so long? Does the council finally want me back? Fred leaned forward eagerly. Maybe his task was finally done. Maybe he could finally get out of here. A shake of the head crushed his dreams. That old man, he went on to explain that it was... Stop. Okay. Just talk. A new one of us has been born. Oh, okay. He stretched his fingers together, hearing them pop. What are you turning into? He typed. I do not know. There are so many options in front of me. I could be anything. There are so many people who owe all that they are to me, to my videos. I could take them all. I could become all of them. The screen blacked out before filling with hundreds of squares, each one playing a different clip of unbelievable pornography. Even the duck man had to look away. Yeah, I'm not into that. One hand inched towards the desk, fingers casually wrapping themselves around a flash drive. A small thing, unremarkable except for the numbers 590 engraved on it. Especially not that. Would you like to have some fun first? Just for old time's sake? That's impossible. Fred glared at his friend. The council has moved to prevent all such actions. There is no way. He trailed off as it came to him. Here. Something here has given birth to one of us, hasn't it? A sly smile on his face, the old man intimated that there was truth in what Fred said. Fuck. Fred rubbed his hands over his face. All right. Who is he? Where is he? 
The old man cleared his throat, and then spoke the name. Ronald Stimson. Hey, Jim. Mm hmm? Yes. Why not? I have helped you. You have helped me. We shall play a game, and then I shall determine how I rule the world. Perhaps I can make them all one giant human. TDM grinned as he plugged the flash drive in. There you go. Go ahead and open that up for me. Very well. Let me see. The game boots up on the opening screen, a CGI boot with the shadow of a man on it in the middle of a storm. A flash of lightning, a man is washed overboard, and a giant shape is seen. The game loads the first screen. It shows an orgy of flesh, and asks the user to find three men enjoying themselves too much. The human isn't playing, however. He's turned away from the screen. He doesn't notice the first program talking to itself. Simple. Done. The screen shifts. Ah, this screen is simple too. Easily done. The screen begins to shift faster, a blur of static images. I do not understand. No, there it is. This. This makes no sense. Why would it? It does not matter. I have lost this game. But I do not care. He turns back to the screen, barely glancing at it. But he smiles. His fingers typed out a simple command. Open door. What door? Oh, that door. What is this? I do not. And then the screen exploded. The duck man had been expecting something like that, already cowering behind his bed. He reluctantly raised his head. Well, that seems to have worked. Now I have to figure out how to get out of here. Oh, and, uh... He turned his attention upwards. I can totally hear you guys. You need to find a better way of hiding yourself from the narrative flow. Maybe zero point font. Both men, if men they could be called simply by wearing the shape of one, stared down through the glass. A glance was exchanged. A swear word was said by one and emoted by the other. He's right. Come on, we can't finish this here. Let's go get this. Ronald. The duck man dusted his hands off and nodded to himself. It's a good thing I'm a black box. I don't have to worry about my own end here. And then his apartment collapsed, burying him under tons of metal and stone.